Salah got great numbers in these so-called big matches. Is he the ultimate big-time player, in an attacking sense at least, in the Premier League? He's just a natural goal scorer, mm. and he turns up when it matters. And uh, he's turned up today, and they've got a point. And I, like Jeremy said, they'll be happy with that point. Your thoughts, Salah, big game player? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, there's no question about that. He's been a big game player. He's going to go down as one of Liverpool's greatest ever players. Um, I think one of the, the, the best things you can say about Salah right now, he's got a year left on his contract. And you see kind well, of a less lot... Less than a year now. Well, there you go, yeah. And you, got, you, you see a lot of players in this type of situation just thinking, well, I'm going to sail off to the sunset. There's a lot of talk about going to the side of Pro League and, you know, collecting a big cheque uh, to go and do that, which he's more than entitled to do. Um, but he's fighting out there. You know, he, he's still the leader of this team. He's still the one, um, you know, dragging the team to get results. And I feel like if they're going to do something special this year, he's going to be right at the head of it again. Three big players for the side. Trent Alexander-Arnold, Virgil van Dijk, Mo Salah, all with contracts expiring at the end of the season. Who do you expect to still be here this time next year? You never know. Whoever comes calling, someone comes knocking, it might take their fancy and they, they move on. But... They've got a great team here at Liverpool, so mm. if they stay, it's a good deal. If they leave, it's up to them, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure all three will leave. Um, I do believe, I think two of them could leave, definitely. I think that, you know, when you look at that trio in particular, they've achieved probably everything that you can achieve in a, in a Liverpool shirt. Um, and I think your mindset as a player then starts to drift to a new challenge. You know, Mo Salah's situation is a little bit different you know I'm, I think he's still proven that he can do it at the top top level so there's no doubt that he could go to a European giant uh, uh, as well he might want a new challenge but I think for Liverpool to let all of them go at once would be a big big hit um, they do need to start planning for the future which I'm sure they're doing we've seen some new faces like Sabozlai out there Gravenberg who I really really uh, enjoy watching play so they're making plans already um, but I think yeah potentially two of the three could go but which would sting the most I'm just looking at the age factor and I'm looking at where the players have come from. Trent Alexander-Arnold, very much from within the club, promoted Jurgen Klopp, gave him his opportunity. He's become one of the standout players for his side. Virgil van Dijk, captain's armband, but he is the wrong side of 30, as is Mo Salah. So I'm just thinking, like, but if they, they have to go put their, all their eggs in one basket... They don't look it, do they? They're still running the games here. We were talking about Virgil. And he's a unit. Mm. He doesn't get beaten in the air. But it's return of interest. It's ROI. You're a businessman now. If they're given big contracts for three years I don't know what they want I don't know what they're asking for the return of investment might not be there over a three-year period we're talking about now versus a long-term contract if he's going to win them games then you pay him at the end of the day you pay to win games and they've got a great squad so yeah. whether he takes a paycheck or he uh, takes one here I, I think also you know you got to look at your dressing room kind of who's kind of maintaining the standards in that dressing room if say Trent goes um, you know, Trent is a, is a local lad. I think that's the one that probably will hurt most because of his age. Um, but then, you know, like you said, you could look at somebody like a Trent and the money that you would get for someone like him would enable a complete rebuild. Like would, Coutinho? Well, it would, yeah. It well, would, if yes. his contract expires, they're not going to get any money. That's the issue. Yeah, well, that is the issue with all of them, obviously. But when you're talking about kind of return as well on what they've, they've brought to the table, I think in particular with Virgil van Dijk and Mo Salah, trophies. You know, and I think with Trent, it's a more difficult one. It is because there's an emotional attachment there to you know, the local boy at the club. You've got that kind of Steven Gerrard type element who stayed at the club forever and was a legend at that football club. And, you know, I'm sure Steven doesn't regret kind of staying at the football club at all. But Trent might have a different mindset. He might be looking at it and just saying, well, you know, let's be honest, if Real Madrid come calling for any player right now, it's a tough one to turn down. And that's the one that keeps getting linked with Trent. Did you watch El Clasico? I think, yeah, we, we've all watched El Clasico and I watched the, you know, the game against Dortmund uh, as well. And I think, you know, Danny Carvajal has been, you know, a legend for Real Madrid and he's also coming to the end of his career as well. With a long-term injury right now. Precisely. And I think, you know, when you're looking at what Real Madrid are going to be searching for this year, there's no doubt that our right-back is going to be top of the list. What do you reckon? Madrid, Trent Alexander-Arnold, the glitz and glamour of Spain and La Liga, you European were, giants. You wouldn't mind putting that shirt on as a player. Yeah. So if they do come knocking, I'll be surprised if he's still here. It's experience as well. You know, yeah. footballers, you want to experience life as well in a different type of challenge. And I think for, for British players in particular, it's happening more. But kind of like when I was playing, and even like when Henry was playing, it wasn't like the norm to see, you know, players going abroad and playing for, you know, top European clubs. And I think, you know, when Trent looks back at his career, you know, part of him is probably thinking, I want to be at this football club my whole life. You know, it, it, this is where it's at. But there'll be a little thing nagging away saying, I want to experience, 
you know, a different culture, a different lifestyle, expand myself as, a, as an adult and, and, and grow as well. And I think that, you know, Real Madrid most certainly, as Kylian Mbappe is finding out, um, they offer brand new challenges that you've got to rise to. And if he wants to level up, then, you know, he's going to have to, you know, have a good hard think about that one. Yeah, well, they're going to be facing each other not too far away in the Champions League. And it's great that he has such a good friend there in Jude Bellingham. But let me ask you this. You talk about Steven Gerrard. Maybe he could have gone, should have gone. What about your career offers that you came along your way? Any regrets, Henry? Were you ever offered something and you're thinking back now? Oh, that would have been brilliant. Uh, maybe near the end of my career, I had the chance to go to America. Um, not into Miami. No, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be here if yeah. I was there. Um, no, Atlanta at the time, and it was just one of the family situation. Maybe I could have gone, experienced it, but I stayed and enjoyed my time at Luton. I know you, you both played for big teams, but mm. are there any regrets that you had in terms of a career offer to go somewhere? Um, I won't say any regrets. I think when I left Newcastle, I was just talking to Henry there. I nearly came here at one point. Did you? Yeah, there was talk um, about me coming. I know that Arsene Wenger was um, an admirer from when I was much younger uh, during my kind of days at Forest and obviously when I went to Newcastle as well. And I think when you look at Arsenal during that period of time, you know, Arsene Wenger was what Pep Guardiola is to the Premier League right now. He was the, the manager that you looked at that you knew was going to elevate you to that next level. Um, you know, we ended up going to you know to Spurs and really enjoying my time there. But you know, I think you know as players, you never want to look back with regrets. I think your, your, your career takes you where it is, and what happens, you know, it is a part of who you are. We'd all love to have kind of the offers on the table that I'm sure Stephen Gerrard had mm, uh, Chelsea, and, and had to make. Well, I mean, you can imagine he could have gone anywhere, Stephen. You know, he's the best midfield player I played against in England, definitely. Um, and he could have gone to Real Madrid, Barcelona, any of them, I'm sure. But look, these are situations that. Liverpool, I'm sure, I've been fully aware of. That these negotiations, you have to understand, you're saying they got down to a year. These have been happening two years ago. Yeah. And, you know, all of the, you know, in particular Trent and Virgil would have been saying, listen, let's just, you know, take our time with it. They all want to see the development of the, of, of the club. They knew that Jurgen Klopp was leaving as well. I'm looking at this Liverpool now and I'm thinking, this is a team that can challenge. This is a team that can challenge for, for European trophies again. It's a team that can challenge for the league again. So I'm sure it's something that they're both looking at now and going, actually, this is something I'd like to be a part of as well.